Um, okay, uh, chat, I need your help. I need your help with something. I need you to explain something to me. Who is Alex Stein? Who is Alex Stein? Explain this to me in words a child can understand. A faggot, a Jew, a homosexual on Blaze TV, a comedian. He's a troll. He cat called AOC. He is Jewish. He's very Jewish. Okay, people tend to agree he's Jewish. Secondly, they agree that he's on a comedian. Third, he is on Blaze. I asked this because I was informed uh, very briefly before the, the stream that someone very near and dear to our hearts had appeared on Alex Stein's show to make fun of Dick Masterson and Nick Riccata, uh, and that is PPP and, and Andy Worski. They have showed up uh, on this guy's, on the blaze, I guess, uh, to dunk on, dunk on Riccata. So... Um, I've not watched this yet. This is time stamped. Fuck yeah, okay. Let's pull it up, pull it up, and let's see what happens. I think he's faking his blindness a little bit. Okay, now we got a few other guys Yo. to get to. Speaking of a cuckening, allegedly, 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 I'm not talking about a sexual assault. Nick yeah, Rakita, alleged. the attorney, the online attorney. Oh. Nick. Oh. Yes. What do we think about Nick? Is he suing? My buddy Monograph is suing Nick. Okay. And Nick and I have always. Dude. Hearing somebody answer PPP and and Andy Worski go nobody with yes, like an emphatic yes. Like, I don't know. That's funny to me because usually there's no answer. There's no reply. They shout out to the world with cosmic indifference. No. But now on this show, there's finally somebody to back that up, to push back and go, yes, Nick Riccata. Uh, he also calls Montograph his buddy. That's important. It's kind of never really vibe, but it's because I'm friends with this guy Montograph who's suing him. So that's always, always yeah. I've always with been Monty. skeptical of Nick because that's of that. Crazy. Look, look. So we started talking about him, a logging him because so he just drinks every. Well, he's drinking millisecond. himself to death because he's unhappy in his marriage. Is what's going on. I'll say this, Alex, I mean, real fast. He inspired me to quit drinking. <laughs> I'm seventy days. 70 days sober off every substance Good job, because Andy. of Nick. Like wow. the, I was like, do I act like that when I'm drunk on the stream? And I just quit. And he inspires me daily. He's my motivation. He's my Eric Thomas <laughs> to yeah. stop drinking. Wow. Well, this whole Montegraf <laughs> thing I'm not kidding. to me is crazy. So Riccata calls Montegraf a child molester, I believe, like without times. any evidence. Montegraff then says to him, if you call me a child molester again, I will sue you. And then Riccata goes ahead and calls him a child molester again with no evidence. His source for this is, well, I heard Mr. Medeker say it on a live stream. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Medeker is a notorious troll, you know? Yes, and he's full of shit all the time. Some, I mean, sometimes you just not can't. all the time. Well, listen, he's sometimes. right. He's right a lot of the time. Yeah, he is but right. This, no, Jim is right about this, stuff, but I'm just saying the guy, I mean, Jim says bullshit instance, stuff. I mean, yeah, on, he I mean, might have been clowning around, you know? It remind me, is Alex Stein the one that um, worked with Sam Hyde on the, uh, the World Peace show? Because I remember that there is one guy that I think is still on good terms with Sam Hyde from Adult Swim who worked on world peace yes he is okay that's oh my god can you believe it i i had a memory about people i am vaguely aware of that was true i was i actually i actually remembered something accurate for once i can't fucking believe this so but Riccata put his whole legal future in jeopardy over a mr Medicare comment on a live stream for which there's really no proof whatsoever I don't know what, what the they... whole lore is with Riccata yeah, and Montegraff. No. I just think it's really funny. But Montegraff is, I think, represented by lawyers that mentored Riccata in the past. And no. this guy oh, Schneider. No! And, and, so his and, old mentors are suing his ass, dude, because he's yes. stressed on stream about it. And, you can and, tell and he was he, stressed. He yeah. keeps shit-talking his old mentors for making him represent crackheads when he first <laughs> got to the office and all this stuff.
And I'm just like, man, like this isn't very professional. The <laughs> shit talk, these guys who got you started in yeah. the business and whatever. But the guy's drinking. Do you know he he put on a contraption called the Baldo? You know Are you Baldo aware is? of the yeah, Baldo, I've, Alex? I've heard you guys talk about this, but I'm guessing it's an attachment that goes on your. I mean, it goes on the testicles or the dick. I'm kind of confused it, on what it, it is. is. Put them on your balls. You sort of balls. stretch them. And I want to on... know. Is there a part? I thought there was a part where he talks about about dick, but I don't know if that is the case. His co-host Drexel, who Drexel. happens to be a black man, uh, you know, and a muscular black man. And that's you know, not a legend. Um, he is an African American. That's yes. the only thing not yeah. a legend yeah. on the stream. Okay, don't sue us, he, he um he left his baldo at Ricada's house. The, wait, beside man. the bed. <laughs> wait, wait so sat- I need the the transcript because I'm hoping. I wish I had more than the one timestamp because I have the one timestamp from the um from okay let's see Drex got the baldo okay they're talking about this well oh, Alex I must really not like Rakeda worry about Drexel we want to get in so Drexel was dating this single mom who yeah. was in her thirties she had a daughter who was thirteen. Now, Drexel dated this single mom for five years. This is all allegedly, of course. <laughs> Everything. But, Everything. But I mean, it's it's his own words. It's not alleged insofar as I allege this of him. It's alleged in the sense that he bragged about it. That's an imp- I think that's a really important part with the Drexel story is that he came out and he was talking big about how we fucked this girl under her mom's nose. You know, and then she found out about it after, you know, it's it's like the creepiest, the creepy fucking thing about it, even more so, like even more so, honestly, is how proud he was of it until people started making fun of him for it. We say it's a legend. When the daughter, when the daughter of the single mom uh, turned 18, she expressed an interest in BDSM to Negative Drexel. Class. Negative class. And Drexel on her 18th birthday took her to a BDSM sex dungeon oh my God. and fucked the 18 year old oh. who he was serving as a father figure to while dating her single mother. And then yelled at what? Nick he, sl- he slept with the stepdaughter basically is what you're saying? That's yeah. disgusting. Wow. The day she and turned then, 18. And, this, and is then, Nick, this is Nick's best friend? Yes. yes. And Nick, right? So they say this story on Nick's show. And Nick's fans, who he's courted as, you know, Christian conservatives, are like, what the fuck? And then he's like defending it. No, no, she wanted it. It's okay. Da da da. And Drexel's been uh, not on the show as much since that point. Well, what, wait, so, but Drexel was dating yeah. the mom at the time. So he was like, oh, he's just cheating on the yes. mom with her daughter and just trying to defend yeah, that. Yeah. What a scumbag. Yeah. Allegedly. It's a, it's a, um, I think that's they embellished it a little bit. Um, I, I want to say that she was in college. I, I mean, they they they, in, they they kind of miss things. It's that he had dated the mom at the time that she was like fourteen. He took her and her daughter to Disney World, and then years later, after they had stopped seeing each other when she was twenty, she somehow spontaneously reached out. It was eight, the age has changed every time. It was 18, 19, 20. Now it's like I, I didn't talk to her again until she was 42 years old. Um, but she reached, she supposedly reached out to him and then they um, dated. He got her into hardcore BDSM shit. And then when the mom found out, the contact was broken. But it was behind her back. I don't know. It's, it's really creepy. So, um, JF, Dick, let's see. Talked about Groypers Dam. I thought I talked about Dick Masterson. I guess not. I'll leave it at that. It's kind of weird. This guy seems to sit at like. So this has 200,000 subscribers, 13,000 views. Is this on Rumble too? It's on The Blaze. Is The Blaze on Rumble? I imagine it would be. I'm curious how much this got on Rumble. Keep watching. 
exactly. Wow. Yeah. Alleged, alleged, alleged. Okay, okay. We Did only have about five alleged? more minutes left of you guys. But actually, okay. if you guys can stay like uh, seven more minutes, and then I'll let you go. So now right, we got we got to talk about. The, this is all alleged, but this guy JF Garepi, Garepi, yeah, oh, uh, and I've got to be careful. And I, de- I know I debated JF. JF is crazy, and I, I debated him on whether systemic racism is real. And then we we argued. We already know about this. Nothing's, nothing's happened. They still haven't found her corpse yet. I don't need to re-explain that. And it is interesting to see this guy who is somewhat notable talk to PPP and Andy Worski about internet drama shit. Everybody loves internet drama. I just can't admit it. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.